Hello, I'm Johan. And I'm Hamdi. And we have these three over topics, which is mass culture, Hollywood and music. In which we will discuss in this presentation. At the end of World War II, American soldiers returned home to a country that was quite different from the ones that they had left. With the massive growth in economy and production, so grew the suburban populace. Families started moving to the suburbans, television and cars were within reach of first sun fires. In the 1949, 940,000 American families had a television set. Ten years later, that figure was 44 million. During the 50s, the century of TV production, movies from New York to Hollywood, soap operas and shows about the suburban family came into people's drawing rooms and kept them away from the cinema. In the movie industry in the 50s, stars as James Dean was a huge teenage icon, especially on the male teenagers. He had a pretty short life because he died in a car crash, but in that short life he had a huge impact on the youth teenage generation. Uh, in the 50s he became a legend when uh, he was nominated for an Oscar award after his death and despite his death. Why did James Dean become this huge teenage icon? One of the reasons was the movie Rebel Without a Cause, where he plays a young troubled teenager named Jim Stark. This role had a big impact on how the teenagers thought were the right way to be a teenager. Boys in the 50s had James Dean. Marlon Brando and Elvis Presley, the girls had Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe was, was the ideal role model for young teenage girls in the 50s. She was always aware of what she was wearing, a very sharp pointed bra or a good old fashioned sweatshirt. She always will pull it off in her way to be feminine. That was uh, why a lot of young girls wanted to be like One of the most important American inventions were, and still is, of course, the King Elvis Presley. With the scandalous attitude, he divided two generations apart. The parent generation thought he was a silly man child, and then the young teenage generation thought he was a wonderfully sexy and exciting rock and roll star. Elvis became that big a star that he, in the Wall Street Journal in December 1956, when the journalist Louis M. Kohlmeier, who was a specialist in business, wrote, Elvis Presley today is a huge business. After this quote, Louis reported that Elvis' merchandise and records became that big a sale that he became a big business. A half century later, the historian Ian Wailsford from New Zealand commented that the phenomenal success of Elvis Presley in the 1956 convinced many doubters of the financial opportunities existing in the youth market. The end of the 60s saw the Beat Generation. The Beat Generation mainly consisted of young people who were beginning to question the rampant naturalism of contemporary society. The Beat Generation was a product of these questioning and consequential mindset. They saw runaway capitalism as a destructive force against the human spirit and an opponent to social equality. In addition to their dissatisfaction with consumer culture, to be railed against the stifling vigor of their parents' generation. The Beat Generation pulled from a variety of source materials to construct their own particular version of literature and culture. Their philosophy as a group was they were seeking towards faith out of what they called an intellectual despair, moral chaos in which they refused to lose themselves. We do plan to see. Do we simply turn our heads?